Good evening. Due to the COVID emergency, tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held by video conference and live streaming video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind that the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and an efficient electronic hearing, we've adopted the following process. If you're watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca, and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, that's 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted on your screen below the live stream at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. When you call in, staff will ask your name, item number you wish to address, and your telephone number. Further instructions will be provided to you to call back to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee pulls for interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it's your time to speak. The applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the, the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for a presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or the agent has any concerns found in the staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this is your opportunity to advise us. The matter will be taken into the committee for a decision. This will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Land Tribunal for giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for minor variance and 15 days or consents to the applicant and or agent and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Land Tribunal. The last day to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be, will be noted in the decision. And I will turn it over to the chair now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Uh, see, we have regrets tonight from Sherry McHale. Uh, committee members, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, item 6.7, CAVA 178 for 2480 Capilano Crescent. And sorry, the nature of the conflict? Neighbor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Secretary Treasurer will put you in the solitary when that comes up. Okay. Um, do we have any requests for deferrals or withdrawals tonight? Um, yes, I see someone with their hand raised. It'll just take me a moment to move them into the meeting. I'm moving Mr. Adam Laird into the meeting. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Laird. Good. 
Hi, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, can you? Hi, good evening. Uh, your name and address for the record and the application you're speaking to? Yes, I'm the applicant and homeowner of 50 Bond Street, and my name is Adam Laird. Okay. You'd like to request a deferral, presumably, to meet with staff based on their comments? I would, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, kindly for a deferral, really getting additional time to discuss the proposal with planning. Thank you. Committee members, any questions for Mr. Laird? See any? Um, all those in favor of deferral? That is unanimous. Your application is deferred. And you can see the Secretary Treasurer when you're ready to be rescheduled. Thank you. Have a great evening and a good meeting. Thank you. I would just want to mention if anybody is here for that application, CAVA 1802021 at 50 Bond Street, the application has been deferred and will be rescheduled to a later committee or a future committee of adjustment. And again, you will be getting any written correspondence and assigned for the property at that time. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, are there any other requests for deferral? I see none at this time. Okay. And we will proceed with our first application, CAVA 172 at 378 Wildwood Drive. If the uh, applicant can uh, please give us your name and address. Hi, yes, can you hear me okay? Yes, good evening, sir. Good evening, Narpal Seikon, 378 Wildwood Drive, Oakville, Ontario, L6K3T, uh, sorry, 1T2. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we proceed, I'll just remind the audience, if anyone wishes to speak to this application, you can call in at 905-815-6095. Okay, sir, yeah, you can give us a brief explanation of your application. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I won't, like I said, uh, what I need to pr present won't take very long. I'll just give you some background on why I'm here. I'm applying for a minor variance and square foot for a new house. Uh, the permitted amount is 3426. We're asking for 3628 uh, to help create an accessible living that supports my elderly parents that will be moving in. Uh, I'm the eldest of five. I'm expected to take care of my parents uh, culturally. So uh, we want to, you know, our intention is to, to build a house to, to accommodate their needs and privacy. Right? The current space that they're in doesn't really accommodate uh, their age as well as it's, 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 it's difficult for them to manage and it's unsafe at this point. So we're looking at this property right here, 378, where we currently live, where we want to build a new house. Uh, you can see there's two very beautiful, mature uh, maple trees out there that help, uh, you know, support the 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 skies and masking of the current property. Um, you can switch over to the next slide, please. I'm not too sure who's controlling that. Okay, I just put together this following presentation to show that our plan does fit, uh, approve fit for the changing neighborhood. It provides no negative impact on the current neighborhood, uh, and then most importantly, it meets the the test of the Planning Act as well as protecting the character of the neighborhood. So I walked around my neighborhood uh, and took pictures of new builds that are currently not on Google Maps. Uh, a lot of these streets here uh, were updated in 2011 and 2018, so they wouldn't be on Google Maps for you to see. Uh, you can start scrolling through. I just took, like I said, I just took pictures of the properties and um, this is just some of them. So these properties that you're kind of seeing here, a lot of them were designed by the same architect in the past few years, which is the one that we've used. We use this architect simply because we liked a lot of the designs and in particular, one of them. And it's the, I'll show you, it's gonna show, come up again. Uh, right, just pause right here, thank you. So that design on the bottom right corner is a picture of 394 Wait and Drive. The top left is kind of a rendering that I put together on my computer. And then the green dot on the bottom left corner is what our architect put together. So. The top right is just a Google map showing you the relation of our house, the green that we want to build, and the blue house 
that we kind of looked at as a model. Uh, so you can go to the next slide, please, and thank you. So the house on the left, as you can see, this was submitted. These are our elevations. The one on the right are the ones that we adapted from weight and drive. That property is about 3,200 square feet, so smaller than what we're allowed, 3,426. Uh, the property is the same width, 60, just not as deep, 125, and ours is 143. Uh, so you can go to the next slide, please and thanks. So this is just the layout for the main floor. So it's the exact same other than that rear porch. We've kind of off centered it to, uh, sorry, we've off we've put it off to the center as opposed to the extreme right or left, which is the weight and house hats. Next slide, please and thanks. So this is sort of the change that uh, we kind of made to the second floor to kind of adapt uh, uh, a suite or sort of a master area suite for my parents. And the weight and house, that red area is an open to below, right? Which would create uh, a big opening on the family room. We didn't want that. We, like I said, we wanted to create a space for my parents. So we want to close that and create a walk-in closet for them that will allow them, uh, well, particularly my father who, who has a walker and has a PSW to kind of support him through this. And then if you look at, sorry, if you want to go back to the previous slide, we have a shower rough in on the main floor there and then the cloud it's just there uh as my parents like i said as they get older my father won't be able to use the stairs we're going to move him down to the office and create space for him there as he as he gets older um sorry continue to the next slides uh, you can go to the next one so this is the house that we kind of looked at we love the layout obviously we did not like the elevation so we made those aesthetic changes to that property there um and this is just photos of the ele front elevation, rear elevation, and side elevation there. And that's the current house. I didn't have access to the house, so I just took a picture of front of it there. Uh, scroll, please. Perfect. So this is the exact floor plan that we took. As you can see, we moved that porch. And all we did was fill in that open to below on the family room to turn that into a walk-in closet to create a suite that would accommodate my parents. Um, go to the next slide, please and thanks. And then again, I just want to kind of uh, reiterate that the property is well hidden. There's lots of mature vegetation. All three of these properties were owned by the same family. So it was the mother's house that we currently live in. The son lives next door and the brother lives next door. They've planted these trees uh, when the families originally bought these houses. So they're very mature. There's a large eight foot hedge on the back which follows by a mature apple tree. Then on the front, like I said, we have two twin uh, mature maple trees that are shaped as umbrellas. And then, like I said, both neighbors have the same trees as well as a hedge that kind of protects the property there. So uh, this is just to kind of, uh, kind of corroborate the fact that, uh, you know, this house already exists in the neighborhood. Um, you know, we just kind of adapted it and, you know, added in that walk-in to create a master suite for my parents to allow for them to get the support that they need. And that is all. Uh, thank you very much for that thorough presentation. Um, I would note staff are not supporting your application. Would you like to speak to the staff comments? Yes, so uh, that was the the urban design planner, uh, Yana, who um, unfortunately, when I had my initial meeting with her, uh, she wasn't very receptive to uh, any of my uh, topics of, that I wanted to speak to. Um, so I wasn't really able to thoroughly explain myself like I did here with this presentation to show that, you know, this house does exist. I'm not. Uh, pro providing any negative impact on the neighborhood. I'm not changing it. I'm actually, uh, you know, adapting a house that's currently there and I'm uh, designing a much better looking house than the one that's currently there. And it's currently being, when it is constructed, it will, it will be blocked by two very beautiful maple trees um, on the front. Uh, conversely, if you look at the, the weight and property, I wasn't able to, to show that weight and property because I didn't have the photos at the time. I wasn't able, to, I didn't have the floor plans. I didn't, wasn't able to, sh to show them that this house currently exists and the floor plans were just, were, were a carbon copy that we took. Um, 
So the mass and scale of the house already exists in the neighborhood. Uh, the architect, like I said, we used uh, designed probably 12 of those, maybe more. I'm just, I'm just looking at the ones that, that, that are there in that neighborhood. If you go on Google Maps, uh, because it's, like I said, it hasn't been updated in 2018. Most of those houses were being constructed and you see the architect's name. Uh, like I said, that's how we kind of found this architect and we saw this house and then went from there essentially. I mean, I wasn't able to explain any of this at that meeting with Yana. I didn't have, I wasn't privy to any of this information. I didn't have the floor plans. I was in the process of obtaining these things. Thank you. Committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant? See none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anybody called in to speak to this application? Um, I do not see anyone at this time. All right, in that case, we will close discussion and I'll turn it to the committee. You've uh, read the staff report. I'm not enamored with the design. You've heard the explanation from the applicant how he believes he's consistent with the neighborhood and has adapted the design appropriately. And I'll turn it to the committee for a motion and discussion. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this application. Um, the, um, the existing established area, particularly within the immediate context of, of the home is, is defined by existing homes, um, tip, uh, one story homes, and, and uh, I'm not seeing anything with this kind of mass in the established area. Um, I think that, uh, I think the architectural design, um, uh, like, like uh, noted in, in the staff comments does um, exaggerate the uh, increased massing. Um, so I have some concerns that uh, this will, um, um, this is uh, an early um, application in this immediate vicinity, and, and um, I, 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 I am struggling with it, quite frankly. So I'm going to put forward a motion to refuse the application on the basis that, uh, the, that it does not conform to the four tests of the Act. Um, uh, the um, RFA variance will... Um, there is excessive massing uh, resulting from the design. And uh, so that's that, that's my uh, motion at this point in time, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there any discussion on that motion to just deny the application? Mr. Flemington. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I support the motion. Um, I just, uh, you know, want to let the applicant can know that you know there are certain things that you know you can do in, in working with the uh, <clears throat> town staff as far as helping you achieve what it is you're looking to achieve by you know trying to fit some of the things that you're looking to fit within the within the space like I know you know you're saying you don't want it open to below because of you know having the walk-in closet there to support your father you know, but as time goes on, as you mentioned, your father may then have to be relocated to another level. So, you know, I just encourage you to, uh, you know, continue to have dialogue with the uh, town staff that can assist with, you know, what you can do to reduce the massing and, uh, um, you know, help achieve the objectives that you're looking for as far as assisting your your family residing all in the same uh, same house. But having said that, I, I'm in support of the motion um, as stated in the staff report, as well as the comments made by uh, my colleague. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any further discussion? I see none. So the motion on the table is to deny the application. All those in favor? 
Okay, that uh, motion passes unanimously. I'm sorry, sir, your application has been denied, but uh, I think the committee agreed with staff that in order to have the increased massing, there should have been more detail uh, paid to, or more effort paid to uh, limit this massing of the building. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks. Again, if anybody is in the audience tonight that wishes to speak to an application, if you can please call in, speak to the secretary treasurer at 905-815-6095. Second application for the evening, CAVA 173 at 2186 Adair Crescent. Good morning, Chair and Committee members. Uh, good evening. Am I, oh, am I able to start or should I? Certainly, if you give us your name and address. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Lauren Boyer and I reside at 3378 Guildwood Drive in Burlington, Ontario, um, L7N1L5. Um, okay. Sorry, um, should I go right into my... Um, yes, please. Dialogue? You a presentation for us? Uh, I have dialogue here for you. Um, I'm the architect and agent uh, representing the property owners at 2186. Adair Crescent. I was hired by the client to remodel their current house to make it more functional for their family. And two of the primary object objectives for this project were to try a large mudroom off the garage while, all, um, while also opening up the house to gain views towards the rear yard pool. Currently, the pool is not visible from the house and only the only access point to the rear yard amenity space is through the garage. Um, to achieve these objectives, the mudroom has to be located at the back of the existing garage. And in order to maintain two parking spaces within, we are proposing to push the front wall about five and a half feet closer to the planking lot line. In doing so, this triggers two variances. The first being a setback of 4.4 meters to the planking side lot line, where 5.7 meters is required to the garage wall. The second is for the garage wall to extend 2.6 meters from the main wall, where 1.5 meters is required. I understand uh, the bylaw limits how far uh, the garage wall can extend from the main wall to prevent home designs uh, where the garage is the most dominant feature in the streetscape. Uh, and we are trying to mitigate this issue by creating a new front and covered porch that extends in front of the garage wall and creates greater emphasis on the front entrance. We're also adding a second floor addition, while, which is in line with the garage um, below uh, and animated with windows. I also understand that the 5.7 meter setback to the garage is to allow for parking on the driveway. We are proposing to have two parking spaces required by the bylaw within the garage and, uh, do, require, and do not require additional parking on the driveway. As a result, item one can be removed from the list of variances as it does not impact, um, as long as it does not impact the 4.4 meter setback we require to shift the garage wall closer to the street. Uh, having two parking spaces within the private garage uh, was more important to our client, my client than having parking on the driveway. There's a large right of way, uh, no sidewalk, sidewalk, which gives plenty of room between the garage and the curb to temporarily park on the driveway, uh, rather than the street if, you know, quickly dropping something for someone off, but it's understood by all that there is no legal parking spaces on the driveway. Uh, the last variance required is to increase the lot coverage from 26.5% to 25% um, where 25% is required. The existing house uh, with the proposed additions is 24.5% lot coverage and is compliant with the zoning bylaw. However, the property owners would like to add a covered patio in the rear yard, which increases the lot coverage ratio to 26.5%. Uh, the covered seating area is otherwise compliant with both height and setback. Planning is in support of variances two through four, and we have spoken to the adjacent neighbors and have submitted three letters of support from 2181 Adair Crescent, 2182 Adair Crescent, and 2187 Devon Road. Uh, I can address any other additional questions the committee may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just before I turn to the committee, if I could ask, uh, turn to staff first, and Catherine, with respect to variance number one, um, you're 
indicating that it's not supported, but also not required. So would it be your position that the applicant should withdraw that uh, variance request? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think it could be appropriate to remove that variance request um, at this time. Yeah, if you have further questions about it, I can speak to it further. And maybe I'll just ask the question that I think the applicant asked. Uh, if she does withdraw that variance request, it, it has no further impact on the compliance of her application. Uh, correct. Uh, my understanding is that since she has the two parking spaces within the garage, they meet the minimum required parking space allocation for that pro for the uh, dwelling. So if they wanted more parking, that's not possible with, without that. But um, if they stick to the two parking spaces, then it would comply. Thank you. I think I'll turn back to Ms. Boyer. Um, would you like to amend your application at this time by withdrawing the request for variance number one? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll then turn to committee. Committee members, are there any questions of the applicant? I see none. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anybody called in to speak to this application? Well, I do someone have someone with their hand raised, so I'm going to move them into the meeting. I'm not, I'm not, oh, now, now they're not. So I don't have anybody at this time. Perhaps it's for a later item. Okay, I'm seeing no questions from the committee. Nobody calling in. I'll close the discussion and look for a motion on this matter. Mr. Flemington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, having, uh, reviewed the application as applied for, uh, also noting that the application now, uh, has variance one removed and, uh, that the application still complies. Um, I also, um, listening to the, um, applicants agents, uh, report this evening presentation and noting that the, the town's written staff report is in favor of the other variances that are on the application. Um, noting that there were no um, written uh, emails or letters in objection of the application, um, as well as uh, Sorry, I said oral as well. So I, I am prepared to move a motion finding that the application does meet the four tests of the Planning Act, that it's minor in nature and keeping with the, uh, the bylaws of the, um, sorry, keeping with the um, bylaws of the, of the town. Um, also noting that there were four letters in support of the application. Um, I want to include the following two conditions um, that uh, the additions and cabana be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings to the satisfaction of the director of planning. And our second condition, which is our standard one that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good evening. And anybody? In the audience wishing to speak to an application tonight, the number to call in is 905-815-6095. Next application tonight is CAV A174 at 163 Weedsdale Crescent. And it looks like even more letters of support than the last application. I think we're on our way to a record tonight for the most uh, audio community involvement, both uh, raising concerns and in support of the applications, which is always good to see. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good evening, members of the committee. My name is Joris Kieran. Uh, I am the agent for the applicant for this uh, application. And uh, I'll, I'll run through a brief presentation, but yes, I, I did want to mention the letters, which obviously you have uh, received. Um, I can't take credit for them. It was the uh, homeowner that uh, went around and spoke to, uh, to various neighbors um, and got uh, those letters. So that's great. Um, uh, my firm has done several houses in that immediate area as well. So um, we're, we're very familiar with, uh, with, uh, with this street and the surrounding areas. Um, also, I want to note before I get into the presentation, uh, staff is supportive of this application and all three variances. So the, the first variance, um, it's a fairly straightforward application, but this first variance is a little bit unique in that uh, it's not one that we often uh, deal with. It's the setback for a driveway on a corner lot, which is to be 15 meters typically, and typically we comply with that because um, it makes sense. But in this case, um, there are two good reasons to seek relief, and one being uh, the mature tree. Uh, we're trying to keep a uh, an adequate distance from that tree. It's it was one of the uh, objectives of the the homeowner, uh, which we which we thought which we supported as well to preserve that mature tree. So the house was designed. Uh, to be sympathetic around that and the driveway, uh, if we were to comply with that 15 meter setback would, would um, you know, get very close to that tree and, and potentially, um, you know, affect it negatively. Uh, the second reason is that if, if we did comply with the 15 meters, the driver would be askew from the garage and we can't move the house over anymore. So um, those are two reasons for variance number one, and it's 11 meters we're seeking versus uh, the 15 required. So I'll go to slide two now, please. So this slide just speaks to the, the, the other two variances. So fairly straightforward. So we've got uh, the garage area, which is just boxed out uh, there. You see a little bit of extra storage in behind the garage. So that's uh, the additional square footage uh, for the garage. And then at the back, uh, you'll see uh, an area that's the main contributor to the lot coverage variance. Uh, it's really a combination of that and also the garage uh, area being slightly bigger drives up the lot coverage slightly as well. So the covered porch is a single story open structure and uh, therefore it doesn't really contribute to the massing uh, in this case. Um, and that's the majority of the, of the overage. So uh, those are the, the three variances. And uh, happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Mr. Kieran. Committee members, any questions? Seeing none, Madam Secretary Treasurer, is anyone called in to speak to this application? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we will close the discussion and I will look for a motion. Ms. Murray, is that your hand up? Uh, certainly, Chair. Um, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town staff's written report, which I now note that the staff is in report of and having also taken into account the comments presented by the applicant this evening, which Mr. Uh, Kieran, are, it's always a great presentation and, and well laid out. I, I appreciate that. Um, and, and noting that there were no uh, uh, written or oral objections, but rather support for this application. Uh, I, uh, I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated October 14th, 2021 and elevation drawings dated October 7th, 2021, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good evening. evening.
the next application of the evening, CAV A175 at 2467 Old Bronte Road. If there's anyone in the audience wishes to speak to this application, the number to call in is 905-815-6095. And I think we're getting a sense of deja vu on this application. Yes, yes, you are. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you. you Good evening, yeah. members of the committee, staff, and the public. Uh, my name is Wayne Coutinho, planner with Crozier Urban Planning and the authorized agent of the owner and the applicant. Um, our office is located at 277 Lakeshore Road West, Oakville. I read through the staff report, which supports the variances and agree with the comments and conditions. As mentioned, uh, committee members are very familiar with the site. The same variance is approved in September of 2019 and a more recent minor variance approved in September 21st of this year related to building shift uh, to accommodate streetscape conditions. Uh, so the new application is required for the same six variances approved in 2019 as two years has lapsed since approval without a building permit in place. So this can be a very brief presentation uh, and I thought I'd start with the rendering of our mixed use building, which is quite beautiful, integrating a heritage house uh, with the eight stories. And the proposal is 131 units and 661 square meters of commercial use. And it's to note 38 of these units are set aside for affordable housing. So this site, this application has gone through site plan approval and is in the same process right now, uh, which received conditional approval in 2019. The delays again are associated with the building permit and the final SBA as a direct impact of our future construction and streetscape design of Old Bronte Road. So the applicants working very closely with staff to uh, finalize the site plan approval process. Now the next slide, please. Um, first variance is to you know, permit a public washroom in the rooftop mechanical penthouse. That's the yellow structure atop the building. Um, we have two images, the site plan above and the underground and below. And the pro public washroom serves the purpose of serving the mechanical room, the amenity area on the roof and the green roof itself. Our second variance with a small two, or we'll get on the side of the building, there's two balconies there. And it's to permit balconies to project into an interior side yard, it's the south facing yard that faces onto the Church Street parking lot. And this allows for private amenity use from floors two to five, which are directly impacted by the heritage building that would be fronting the building on Old Bronte Road. Uh, the third variance is to permit balcony, balconies to project up to 1.9 meters. That's from 1.5 meters from the building face. And this is a technical variance as it's measured from the, each unit's building wall. Each, as you can see, each building Balcony or the balconies do not really project beyond the main face of the building wall, just beyond each floor itself. Uh, the fourth variance is to reduce the landscaping between the driveway and the interior side lots, zero meters, and that's to accommodate the one way drive aisle, which is desirable to have the parking and the underground parking structure accessible from the rear as well as the loading. And it was done as a one way drive aisle because of all these different elements uh, to create safety yeah, around the structure. Privacy is maintained by two meter high fence and setbacks from the building itself are shown to the front and sides and rear yard. Our fifth variance is to permit an air vent. That's uh, the orange square to the side of the building, uh, which is technically so in the front yard of the building, and it's a technical variance as the floors to and above cantilever above the walkway on the left, and thus that air vent is within that structure. This air vent is a flush at grade with the walkway and does not create any negative impact views. Uh, our sixth variance is to reduce the non-residential parking rate essentially by one parking space to 1.24.5 meters squared from 1.24. And again, this is technical as we're providing that one parking space as a car ride share space. 
within this building. Um, let's summarize those experiences which you've which you've heard before. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer or speak to those. Thank you. Committee members, any questions for the applicant? See none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anybody called in to speak to this application? Uh, there is no one at this time. Okay, thank you. I will close the discussion and look for a motion. Mr. Flemington. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Having uh, reviewed the uh, uh, written application, as well as noting that the town staff report is in support of the application, and also uh, listening to the uh, comments uh, from the applicant's agent, uh, noting that there were no written or oral objections from the public, and noting that this is being applied for as a result of them not meeting the condition from the last approval. Uh, I am prepared to move a motion uh, that the application be approved as applied for, finding it meets all the four tests of the Planning Act. And I'd like to include the following two conditions, that the building be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning. And the second standard uh, condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, have a good evening. Our next application, CAV A176 at 265 Elton Park Road. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak to this application, if you can please call 905-815-6095. And you'll be given instructions on how to get into the meeting. Good evening, Mr. X. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Uh, William Hicks, 295 uh, Robinson, Suite 200, representing the owners, Mr. and Mrs. Levy, and uh, here to request two very simple variances. I'm happy to make a very brief presentation if you'd like. Really, the, if you can put the panel up. Um, really, one of the variances is for a garage side yard setback simply because the building is not, if you go to the site plan, uh, which is down three, I think, just in there, if you can blow it up. I'm sorry, it's a little out of focus. I'm not quite sure why tonight, but um, simply the building is not uh, perpendicular to the side lot line. So we literally need a variance for two inches on the rear corner of the garage. So, so very minor. And then the second variance is for total uh, floor area to lot ratio. And the only reason we're asking for it is that we we could actually build another 200 square feet on the second floor and not need a variance, but because we didn't build over 25% of the garage, we've had to include the whole garage area in our calculations. So thus we are at uh, a number that exceeds the allowable gross floor area. And the client was, he said, uh, I guess we could add the 200 square feet, but I don't need the 200 square feet. So I'd rather just get the variance. So, so I think uh, we've talked to six neighbors have submitted letters of support. I know planning's in support of it. It's a fairly minor addition to the house. It's a reconstruction of the garage and a small addition on the second floor above the back portion of the garage, but it's not actually over the garage itself. So I think happy to answer any questions. A very simple application and uh, seems to be well supported by everybody who's seen it, so. Yes, and we have the six letters um, in support as well. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Any members, Thank you, Chair. Uh, sure. Any members, any questions for Mr. Hicks? Seeing none, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anybody called in to speak to this application? Uh, not at this time. 
Okay, thank you. We'll close discussion. I'll look for a motion. Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, the the um, proposed development um, is relatively minor. The resultant variances are, are minor, both, both numerically and in terms of the impact. Uh, Mr. Hicks was, um, was fairly clear in his presentation and articulate with respect to um, the extent of the application. And I think staff concur with the, uh, with the findings, as do I. So um, I'll put forward a motion of approval, um, finding that the requested two variances conform to the four tests of the act. Um, the um, motion should be subject to two conditions, those uh, being that the additions be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated uh, September 28th, uh, 2021, uh, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision of a permit has not been issued. I would note that there were uh, six letters of support provided in support of this, and there were no members of the public present. Um, uh, to, to delegate with respect to this matter. Mr. Hardcastle, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? And that is unanimous, your application is approved, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. Take care. Next application tonight, CAV A177 at 3233 Mintwood Circle. If there's anyone in attendance tonight wishing to speak to this application, you could please call in now at 905-815-6095. That's 905-815-6095. Yes, I have Mr. Abed in to speak to this application. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm, uh, this is my first application to the town, so excuse me if uh, there is any uh, uh, mistakes or uh, my English is not clear enough. Well, that's uh, okay, sir. We're all very relaxed here. So if we could just get your name and address first, and then you could start with your presentation. Um, my name is uh, Sufyan Abed. I am the owner of uh, 3233 Mintwood uh, Circle uh, at Oakville. And uh, uh, for my application, uh, the, the application is for finishing the basement uh, of my house uh, and adding the stairs uh, for uh, entrance and exit from uh, the basement, uh, separate entrance to, to the uh, unit. Uh, the application uh, was already agreed or approved by the committee for the finishing, but uh, the only thing remaining is the variance request for uh, the stairs uh, because it, it consumes uh, part of the side yard. Uh, uh, the side yard itself is uh, uh, small. Uh, it has a width of around 1.4 uh, meters, and the stairs will consume almost all this uh, area in width. Uh, there were some comments in the past about uh, this uh, adjustment, and uh, uh, the comments received by the fire uh, team is that they need to have uh, proper access from or uh, exit from the backyard or uh, from the front in case uh, uh, an emergency happens. So uh, they wanted this stair to uh, be in a way that doesn't stop uh, people from running out from the building. So uh, the suggestion was to, the, to make this stairs in two directions. You can enter uh, through five steps going downward, and then uh, another five steps are added 
to move to the other direction. So it's, uh, uh, you can call it co-directional. You can enter from one side, exit from the other, or uh, you can uh, uh, move in the opposite direction. So it doesn't uh, block the weight out of, from the building. And it's only five steps, so it's not uh, very deep under the ground. Uh, the, the change was uh, uh, applied for since last year, and uh, only this year it came to the Committee of Adjustment after uh, reviewing all the finishing details of the accessory unit or the basement. And uh, uh, I would be happy to receive any uh, comments or questions. Hey, thank you. you I had no reason to be nervous about your presentation. That was very helpful to you. Committee members, right. any questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in to speak to this application? Uh, there is no one at this time. Thank you. We will close discussion and I'll ask for a motion. Ms. Murray. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of, having, having also taken into account a great presentation by Mr. Abed, thank you very much, it was very clear. Um, I do note that um, fire prevention staff have reviewed the application and are of the opinion that since the stairs are proposed to continue access to the rear yard, then adequate access is maintained. Staff also note that grading and drainage is reviewed through the development engineering site plan process. And that while the subject property is not cur currently subject to DESP, the staff are recommending a condition that the approval be subject to DESP approval. So I just wanted to make that, that clear that that will be in the recommendation. I'm, uh, there, are, there are no uh, members of the community to speak against this application. And I, I'm satisfied that the minor variance uh, meets all four tests under the Planning Act. I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for the variance subject to the following conditions, which are that the access stair be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning that the approval expires two years from the date of a decision of a building permit has not been issued, and that the approval be subject to development engineering site plan approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. Thank you, have a good evening. You too. Okay, if you just uh, bear with me a moment, I'm just gonna move Miss Murray uh, into the waiting room and I'll let, I'll let you know when, that, when that's done. Okay. okay, we should be good to go. Okay, thank you. Next application, CAVA 178-2480, Capilano Crescent. You, anyone wishing to speak to this application, you could please call 905-815-6095. I believe we have the owner ready to speak to this application. Uh, that is correct. So, good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, everybody, and thank you for hearing my application this evening. My name is Michael Vandevic, and I'm from 2480 Capilano Crescent, uh, application number CAVA1782021. Thank you, sir. And I have to add, um, I've been on this committee for probably 20 years now, and I've never seen 31 letters of support and people clamoring to join the meeting to also support you. So I commend you for your efforts. I'll get to that. Yeah, we do live in a very unique community, that's for sure. <laughs> so if you could please proceed with your presentations. 
Sure, thank you very much. So uh, we are here this evening to request this committee and go to the next slide, please, uh, to, uh, to authorize a single minor variance to permit uh, the maximum lot coverage of accessory buildings on our property to be 49 meters squared, or in other words, seven meters squared more than the current bylaw. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please, that would be great. So I mean, you mentioned the community to support. So the community to support has been fantastic. Uh, we live in what I would say is that we're original homeowners. We live in a very tight knit community. So we took it as our responsibility to make sure there was broad awareness and broad communication of exactly what we were doing in our backyard and what this variance really meant. So to support that, we shared our plans with as many neighbors as would listen to us. <laughs> and uh, we posted a very plain explanation brochure for neighbors uh, to take as part of the variance signage. And you can see that image on the right hand side here. Uh, yeah, so we, neighbor response has been overwhelming and we've had 31 letters in support and I believe there are uh, several neighbors that wish to speak this evening in support as well. If we move to the next slide, please. Uh, for the proposed construction plan, this is a site plan, that's our property on the left there. Um, we have an oversized pie-shaped lot in the community, 39 meters deep, 16.6 uh, .6 meters wide at the back of the lot, so just under uh, 530 meters squared. In terms of accessory buildings, which are the issue here, um, the existing garage, uh, you can see that in the bottom right of the plan, uh, it's part of the original construction by Merrick Homes. It has an area of 36 square meters and coverage of 6.8%. The proposed pavilion is about a third up from the bottom of the lot and it's also in the exploded view. Uh, that will have an area of 13 meters squared should we get approved. So that's the combined area of uh, 49 meters squared we're looking for. And I'll just state that the lo we've located this in a manner to make sure that we exceed all minimum setback requirements per the bylaw. Setback is 1.25 meters versus the minimum of about points uh, of exactly 6.6 uh, .6 meters to the side lot. You can move to the next slide, please. In terms of the actual structure, left side has the, uh, the actual plans, elevations. Uh, the pro proposed structure is 12 by 12 or about 3.66 meters squared. At its highest point, which is away from the lot line, it will be just under three meters tall, which is well below the four meter maximum, which is permitted by the bylaw. And the purpose of this structure, simply put, is to create a comfortable backyard environment that provides protection and shelter for the sun and rain. We do have um, Western exposure in our backyard, so sun protection is a must. <laughs> if we can move to the next slide, please. Um, so we believe this proposal maintains the character of the neighborhood and I'll speak to a couple of items here. First, design characteristics. So on the upper left is the current trellis on the location. Um, and in the upper right is our desired pavilion outcome. That's a rendition of what will be there. So the existing trellis structure is permitted because it doesn't have a roof and therefore does not count as coverage under accessory building regulations. But what we're proposing to build is obviously attractive. It will have Douglas spur, structural beams, clear cedar, um, privacy screens and ceiling. And we believe that the character and the materials that we've selected are really compatible with our neighborhood. And while the structure itself is very attractive, we've also uh, planted evergreen cedars behind the pavilion to further enhance views for neighbors. And you can in fact see them in the picture in the upper left. Those are newly planted, just taller than the fence. So far, obviously those will grow. Um, and last point I'll make here is that there's been a lot of careful design here. Uh, we've made sure that there's no negative impacts in terms of privacy, shadowing, grading, and drainage on neighboring properties. And this is thanks to work with Let's Landscape, our, Let's, our landscaping company, and Genesis Woodworks, who are helping with the actual structure. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, I'll just point out that accessory buildings are definitely the norm of this community. Uh, the character of our community involves uh, the original two-story coach homes. There are long driveways to the back of the lot in the backyard. So all backyards in the neighborhood and a neighbor have neighboring adjacent structures. So in particular, these are typically garages with white vinyl siding in most cases. And I've given the example of our backyard here. Um, where there's our property and there are four um, garages around there and I've provided images so you get a sense of, of what we see when we look out our back window and that's what everybody sees in their own backyard. Um, if we can actually move forward two slides, I'll just um, skip to a bit of a conclusion. Um, so I, you would have already seen this, Oakville Planning Services reviewed the proposed variance and have provided their professional opinion that the application satisfies all of the applicable tests under the Planning Act. I won't read through these, you would have already seen these. Um, and then as we just skip to the summary, we would just next slide, uh, request that the Committee of Adjustment authorize this minor variance as requested. Any questions? Okay, thank you. I'll just add, and it's maybe a lesson for future applicants that might be watching. The committee regularly gets uh, 
complaints, concerns from neighbors when they say the notice didn't give them enough information to understand what was the application was all about. So the idea of providing that information with your notice sign, uh, I think is most welcome and excellent idea that others could benefit from as well. So again, thank you for that. Thank you. Committee members, any questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, I know we did have some requests to speak. Do we have people on the line? Yes, I'm, I'm just going to move someone into the meeting. It'll just take me a moment. Good evening. Good evening. Get your name and address, please, sir. Yes. Um, my name is uh, Kiyoshi Ota, and I live at uh, 2608 Papalano Crescent, Oakville. And uh, we're a neighbor of Mike's. Um, not that Mike needs the help with this application, but our, our backyard is directly adjacent to Mike and Stell's property at 2480 Capitol Crescent. Our property is actually back onto each other. So from the slide deck you saw, um, the major exposure along that backyard is our property. And uh, we have direct view of the proposed upper pavilion. So we have lived uh, in our home for the past 23 years. And during that time, we have been fortunate enough to be neighbors of Mike and Chitelle. Uh, They are excellent neighbors and are very respectful of the neighborhood and its residents. Both my wife and I have no objection to the construction of the covered pavilion. And in fact, we would wish that we could have a similar structure in our backyard. But apparently Mike's budget uh, can't survive that. So the pavilion is very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, it's very tastefully designed and we believe fits very well with the character of the neighborhood. Now, uh, this is very important for us as we will be able to see the structure from our backyard. So again, we fully support this variance application and hope that the completion of the structure can happen soon. Thank you. Thank you. And the uh, committee would be happy to welcome you back when you decide to move forward with your own structure <laughs> if you need a variance. Thank you. Any members, any Questions for the neighbor? I see none. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Madam Secretary Treasurer, anyone else wishing to speak to this application? Sorry, yes, there is. I'll just move them into the meeting. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, good evening. No, oh, good evening. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks, thanks for the opportunity to, for speaking. Um, I'm, I've, I'm also a neighbor of, of Mike's. I'm at, my name is Tom Zugas. I'm at 2452 Capilano Crescent. So my house backs to the side of, uh, of uh, Michael's house uh, where the driveway is. Um, so I, I, when Mike asked me to, to, to speak, if I was willing to speak, I, I said no problem for me to speak. I have the same experiences as, as Kiyoshi has. Uh, I'm also original owner, so I've been a neighbor of Michael's and Chattel's for the past 23 years, so I know them very well. Um, I just have a couple of comments I was going to mention. Um, uh, for overall, I, I, what we found with the work that they've been doing in their, in their backyard, the landscaping, we found that everything, everything's been very tasteful, same comment as Kiyoshi had, and, and found it to be very well done. Um, all, all uh, the homes in our area have the detached garages, so it's not really a, a, an issue in terms of having a, a structure in the backyard. Um, definitely the design that, that I've seen from the, from the plans and from the rendering that, that Michael presented uh, shows a very, uh, very well designed, uh, fits the rest of the landscaping, and it's, it's very well suited to what, what's there with the rest of the uh, design that they have, as well as with the fencing that they recently installed. Um, the other points are the structure itself is not visible from the sidewalk because it is located behind the house. Um, and from, from our, from our vantage point, the, uh, 
the high fence and the greenery that's between our two houses makes the uh, the structure pretty much non-obtrusive. So it's not even a problem for us. Uh, visibility of the structure it doesn't it doesn't really uh, obstruct anything for us, and it's it, uh, we think it's going to be sort of a well done and well uh, uh, well built structure, and it'll actually be very aesthetically pleasing. So both my wife and I are very uh, you know, pleased to, to support Michael's uh, request for uh, for this variant. If there's any questions for, for me as a neighbor, just let me know. Okay, thank you. Any members, any questions for the neighbor? I see none. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Madam Secretary, is anyone else wishing to speak to the application? I see no one at this time. Okay, thank you. And at this point, uh, we'll close discussion. And I will look for a motion, Mr. Flemington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think I'd like to move into that neighborhood. It seems like uh, <laughs> we're very supportive of each other. And as commented on <clears throat> by our chair, uh, 31 uh, letters and support, as well as the uh, two uh, oral uh, presentations this evening in support of your application is uh, very well noted. Um, so having reviewed uh, your application and writing, as well as noting that the written staff report from the town is in support of, and as well noting the comments from your uh, neighbors uh, in support, illustrating that there are no negative impacts of the uh, accessory building that you're looking to uh, erect, um, as well as the 31 uh, letters in support uh, for the application, noting that there were no uh, written or oral objections from the public. I am prepared to uh, move a motion in support of the application as applied for. And uh, thank you, thanking you again for uh, doing the work as far as uh, what the chair had uh, mentioned. Um, there's two conditions. One, that the accessory building be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings uh, dated 09-29-2021. And two, that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. So this application does uh, is minor in nature and does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Committee. Appreciate it. Okay. Have a good evening. As well. It'll just take me a moment to move uh, Ms. Murray back into the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back, Ms. Murray. Our next application, CAVA 179 at 2345 Bellier Street. If there's anyone viewing tonight that wishes to speak to this application, you could call 905-815-6095. Again, 905-815. 8156095 I believe we have Mr. Shedden to speak to this application. Good evening sir. Yes, good evening. How are you? Uh yeah, my name is Scott Shedden. Uh I'm the agent for property 2345 uh, Bellier Street. If we get your address, please, sir. Uh, my address is 1155 North Service Road West, Oakville. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead with your presentation. Yeah, so just a just a verbal uh, presentation. The tough act to follow from uh, 
from the last one with the letters of support, et cetera. However, in saying that, this is my uh, fifth uh, application. I've been a part of in a basically a block radius. Uh, we built the neighboring house uh, to this property um, uh, four years ago. Uh, we built uh, a property uh, across the street from this one and then two others just south of it. So uh, the application we have today is for uh, GFA increase and a lot coverage increase, uh, which are uh, both are less than the uh, previous applications uh, that we uh, applied and were approved for, as I said, a block uh, block radius. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, the house that we're building is similar size uh, to the others, getting a little bit smaller based on a percentage. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, working with planning uh, to get something that we thought fit the area. You know, massing was not too big, uh, but gives the spaces. Uh, you know, for the house that were, were needed, uh, but we spent a lot of time working through that, tightening things and putting an application together that uh, we thought was, um, you know, quite uh, in keeping with, with the area. So, uh, again, it's a 2% uh, increase for GFA, just over uh, 10 square meters and 1% uh, increase in coverage, um, uh, pretty not, uh, minimal, 6 uh, square meters. Uh, with your presentation there, did did you include any elevation drawings that might be helpful for people to see? No. Um, I I don't have anything as uh, just what was attached to the uh, the application. Elevations are there for plan. Okay. Thank you, uh, committee members. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, we, I believe we had some opposition and request to speak to this application. Um, if anybody's in uh, attendance wishing to speak, they need to raise their hand so I can move them into the meeting. I, I don't see anyone at this time. Okay, I guess they changed their mind. I can speak to that uh, objection. I didn't see that. That's okay. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you if you could speak to that. Sure. Yep. So the, I did see the objection on uh, by a neighbor at 2353 uh, Bellier Street, uh, basically concerned about uh, vehicles um, on uh, going north to south on Nelson Street. Um, and uh, I, I think th their concerns are valid. Um, uh, basically, they're asking that the setback, uh, you know, be in, you know, uh, in keeping with the regulation, which we are. So we're not asking for any setback um, uh, difference here. Our, our front, uh, we have a front setback that we're adhering to, and a flankage yard that we're adhering to. So we we're not asking for anything that way. Uh, and just to speak to their request, I actually, my children also go to the same school just down the road. Uh, and we've done a lot of work on Nelson Street. I actually reached out to the counselor uh, at the time we were doing it and had a traffic uh, report uh, done uh, at our request. And it came back uh, for the same thing, asking for a stop sign. And it came back saying that this was not, you know, uh, supported due to the traffic study that was done. Um, so again, I don't think it has anything directly to do with our application. We're not asking for any setback uh, change, but uh, from a you know pure community standpoint, I support uh, what they're doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll just check once again just to make sure, Madam Secretary Treasurer, that nobody called in. Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, thank you. In that case, we'll close the discussion. Committee, you heard the presentation, also had the applicants address the objection letter, which in his view does not relate directly to the variance being requested. Uh, look for a motion at this time. Mr. Hardcastle. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, um, uh, including the, um, the the applicant's presentation and the uh, written staff report, which is which is in support of the application, um, I'm satisfied that the requested variances conform to the four tests of the act, and as such, I'll put forward a motion of approval. Um, noting that um, th that the applicant has um, um, uh, addressed uh, the, the, the concerns raised within the um, uh, letter of opposition um, satisfactorily. Um, the motion should be subject to two conditions, those conditions being that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated October 20th, 2021, 20, uh, and the elevation drawings dated October 13th, 2021, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hartassel. Any discussion on that motion? I see none. All those in favor of the motion to approve? Okay, that is unanimous. Your application is approved, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, have a good evening. You too. I'll just note that if there's anyone in attendance who was expecting to see CAVA 180 at 50 Bond Street, that application was deferred earlier this evening, so it will be coming back to a future meeting. Our next application is CAVA 121 at 1182 Limbrook Road a previously deferred application. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak to this application, if you could call in now at Showing Lindsay Bruce as the agent. And okay, I'm now, now on the screen. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. This is Joel Tanner with the Office of Simple Design Studio with uh, Lindsay Bruce here on my side as well. Okay, we just get your address, please. 15 Colburn Street, Hamilton, Ontario, L8R2G2. Thank you. Uh, welcome back. Proceed with your presentation. Thank you so much, committee. Uh, we are here speaking about 1182 Lindbrook Road in Oakville today. Um, it is a two-story single-family home. Um, currently, there is an, a, a group, a grouping of buildings with multi-tenant situation, and so what we're looking to do is completely demolish the existing structures and replace it with a single-family dwelling. Um, as you're aware, we were here in uh, August, and unfortunately, our, um, our variances were not heard. Um, since then, we worked with committee, uh, sorry, with planning staff, um, as well as with the owners of the property and in consultation as much as we could with neighbors um, in order to come up with what we felt was a um, um, a modified version uh, that could better suit the neighborhood um, is all encompassing architecturally with what is happening in the streetscape and the surrounding environment. Um, we've reduced the, um, the garage depth to meet the required side yard. Um, so we've removed that as a variance. We've shifted the house uh, further back into the property ever so slightly to meet the required front yard. We've reduced the dwelling depth variance uh, by 5.79 meters. And we've reduced the width of the dwelling um, in order to increase the side yard setback. So in effect, we've, you know, we've, we've really pulled and tugged and twisted as much as we could to get to a point where our clients are still happy with the overall design aesthetic and with what we feel is a reasonable proposal. Um, going on to page two, it'll just uh, briefly walk you through um, Okay. Sir, can, can we just flip to the next page? 
perfect. Um, so this is where we had um, some fairly substantial modifications on the side yard. Um, so we, we have increased uh, the side yard setback and we're now requesting a 3.19. Um, and again, we are bettering the situation. I just want to touch on that, that we are pulling this uh, away from where the existing house sits. Um, it, it sits about 1.2 meters closer to the existing property line. If we go to the next slide, variance number two, this is where we've made some overall modifications on the overall design aesthetic in order to um, uh, reduce the overall dwelling depth. Um, I'd like to reinforce in this situation as well that, again, the proposed dwelling that we are putting on said property um, is going to have less of an overall depth impact than what the existing buildings on, on the uh, property have currently. Next page is going to discuss variance number three. Um, so we're sitting at a, uh, an RFA, um, which is slightly over the allowable of 29. We're sitting at 31.12 currently. Um, but we do feel that the way that we've moved around the massing, we've set back the second floor on the front facade, as well as on the left-hand side of the dwelling, um, so that we're not creating this really dominant streetscape. We're trying to blend in with what exists on the streetscape uh, currently. Um, there's the next, um, next slide here. We, I, I just, yeah, sorry, you don't have a page, but I just want to touch on a couple quick things. Um, the, um, we provided the drawings and a list of the changes to the neighbor at 1190 Lindbrook. Um, we do understand that they, that they don't support the variances, but we do feel that the changes that we're bringing forth, um, as mentioned in the town planning staff, um, they are in support of the proposal. We do feel that is, it is in keeping with the neighborhood and it's no longer dominant on the surrounding environment. Um, the side yard setback, the concerted shading is mitigated um, with the one-story massing. Um, this is an improvement to the current uh, two-story dwelling setback um, of 2.01 meters. Um, the dwelling depth, um, again, we touched on that earlier, and then the slate GFA increase. Um, the final item to touch on, which is a clerical error, but we don't want to um, assess any modifications to the application. Um, uh, the cabana, which is, there is a set of drawings that is included um, in our drawing package. Um, it was not included in the calculation of the lot coverage, but again, I just want to reinforce we're not looking to modify uh, the variances today. We're not looking to add that to the list. We're looking to um, push forward with the variances as listed today in front of you. Thank you. Uh, got a question on that last comment you made. Uh, the drawings that are submitted show a cabana and if that this house were to be approved and built with the cabana, would it comply with zoning or not? It would not comply with zoning. So uh, we will we will be modifying the size of the cabana in order to abide by the regulations set forth in the allowable lot coverage for the property. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. The committee will have to consider whether if it chooses to approve the application with um, that cabana on the drawings it may wish to uh, instead of approving subject to the drawing submitted um, possibly seek to approve to the satisfaction of the director of planning to make sure that those revisions take place but i'll i'll leave that up to the committee uh, committee members uh, do you have any questions for the applicant I see none. Oh, Ms. Murray. Um, just one question. So, um, uh, if you were to, is is it is it possible that we will see you again for minor variance for the cabana? Um, that's a topic of discussion that we have to have with the client. The client has been out of the country the last two weeks. 
Um, we had a really good call with Catherine last Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so it was just brought to our attention, but we haven't had satisfactory time with our clients because they've been out of the country. Um, so as of now, we're going to be full steam ahead with applications on the development of the single family home. Um, our goal is to resize the cabana to fall within the 25%. Uh, but again, topic of discussion for us and the client at a later date, if they did want to return in the 2022 calendar year, uh, but we wouldn't be seeking modifications to the single family home residence as designed. Thank you. And a follow up, Mr. Chair, um, to uh, town planning staff, if they wish to comment. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I believe that at this point, um, they could still have a structure that'd be about 16 square meters and still comply with the lot coverage on their property. So we ought, um, we recommended in the recommendations that the site plan be to the satisfaction of the director of planning so that at the time of building permit, if they are able to comply with that provision, they have the opportunity to do so. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, do we have any residents wishing to speak to this application? Uh, yes, we do. I'm just gonna move someone into the meeting. Hello. Hi. Good evening, sir. Yes. Hello, Justin. My name is Ken Shi Yu, T I A N X I, last name Y U. I'm the owner of the residential sleeping in the 1190 Limburg Road. So, as I written the letters to the communities earlier this week, um, I will notice the, there's a few variances was majority of the instead of the minor, right? So especially in the depths of the of the during of the by law is only 20 meters and uh, they are asking for the 25.61 meters uh, of the depths um, they are keep mentions about how the current uh, of the old house to be and what it's like and then please be note the current house at the backyard is one floor right they are trying to build a second floor on top, which will be covered most of the sunshines and the shadows goes to my backyard. Uh, especially um, by law, it says the internal side yard should be 4.2 uh, of the zoning of the R1. And they are trying to reduce the zoning um, of the internal side yard of the 3.19 to my side. Um, they do mention about so currently the old house is being built uh, is 1.9, but still, I mean, this is too close to my property. Um, especially they trying to build e elevators close uh, on my east, uh, the Easter side, uh, which gonna cause a lot of noise. Um, when the 11, uh, 1182 neighbors uh, job by they were mentioned it's a single family so they only have a small baby kit um, and, uh, and 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 parents right so it's a, like a three families um, it's a they, they don't need that like, huge amount of the space for living and uh, especially there's internal uh, if you see the side map there's like internal yard inside of the of the house. This is very weird as a design I have ever seen, right? And uh, for the number two of the maximum during depths, right? This is a 28 of the, um, more than the, the laws uh, required, right? The permission, which I think is too much goes to the back of the depths of the, of the, of the backyard. Um, so, and also the, um, RFA, right? So they're trying to increase the uh, RFAs for the large living space. Um, so, and uh, they send a person, I believe is a constructor or the uh, represented their client, um, anyway, the agency, they say that they are, um, they, they ask me. Uh, so 
if they are move the elevator to the other side, are you willing to allow me to pass uh, pass the agreement? I said no. And then they said there's right now currently they are only build seven point nine two meter of the high of the second story of the buildings, but now they are asking me. So they say by law it can go to nine meter high. So they are kind of like striding me and saying. Uh, I understand the law very well, and um, I'm trying to basically protect this community, especially um, they are trying to shift uh, the the way of their facing to the west side, especially, right? So I try to talk, I try to understand the law, how the law designs. I try to also try to uh, do the more communication with you and uh, try to understand their, I mean, I've been listening to the entire communities of the talking. Most of the family, they are looking for big space for a reason, like the first one, uh, they are dead and need a space to live in, right? But small single family for three room, why they need this large of the space, especially, right? Thank you, thank you for the communities, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Any members, any questions for the delegate? I see none. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, oh, secretary. also, just one more thing, by the way. Um, on the other side, is, uh, the, the west side, um, the neighbor did not have the chances to come for this community. She asked me to say, and she wrote a letter uh, to support as well. So I, I think it's in the, so there's two options of the letter requiring these matters. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, we do have a letter from another resident. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone else um, called in who wishes to speak to this application? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tanner, would you like to respond to the neighbor's presentation? Through you, Mr. Chair, to the neighbor as well as to the committee. Um, so just want to reinforce that um, I think the biggest component to touch on here is variance number two and variance number one. And so I think that they're very interlaced. Um, so we're looking for a reduced side yard of 3.19 as opposed to the 4.2. 75% um, of that, the side of Chengxi's home, 75% um, of the proposed dwelling that we're looking to construct is a single story. It's only the last uh, 24 feet or so of the overall structure. Uh, that is proposed as a two-story volume. Um, it's a two-story volume with a flat roof um, that is less than the regulatory height. Um, what I was trying to explain to Chengxi is that um, we, you know, if we were to build to the conventional bylaw, we could build a two-story um, up to nine meters, up to 4.2 from the side yard, and it would be a lot more dominant on that side yard. Um, and in our opinion, it would, it would uh, increase the amount of shading on his side yard. Um, we have a fair amount of vegetation on that easterly side of the property that is all being retained. And so right now, shading already exists in Chanxi's rear yard due to the vegetation. There is not a plan for its removal. And so therefore, I, I think that the, the vegetation is already providing the shading and the privacy that both Chanxi as well as our um, homeowners are requiring and, and really requesting in the overall design schematic. So I think the, the overall impact has been minimized in this redesign. Um, we've removed any windows from that easterly side yard facing. Um, we, you know, we want to ensure that Chanxi has privacy in his rear yard, um, just as much as we want privacy into the side yard building envelope of the proposed structure. Um, and then um, just want to reiterate the, the overall dwelling depth so that two 5.61 meter dwelling depth um, where 20 meters is permitted, that's inclusive of roof overhangs. In a more contemporary dwelling, we tend to have larger roof overhangs. So the wall to wall uh, dwelling depth calculation is sitting at 24.54. Um, so there's a reduction there of about 1.2, 1.1 meters. And the second floor, we've then further reduced its overall depth down to 23.31. So we are reducing that massing as we scale up onto that from that first floor to that second floor. And again, there's a magnitudal change there with those overall roof overhangs. 
Um, and then again, I, I do think that the RFA request of that additional 2.12 is fairly minor in nature. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's driven off of the architecture and the intent around the elevator and the closet space and the organization and the flow of the home. Um, it's a very artistic home. It's a, it's a courtyard central focused architecture. Um, so what we've done is we've pushed the living environment out to surround the courtyard. So we want the owners to embrace the rear yard just as much as we want them to embrace that inner courtyard sanctuary. And so a lot, of, a lot of the architecture is driving these uh, this list of variances. Um, but again, I think it's in keeping with uh, um, with the intent of the bylaw, and uh, and and again with planning staff support, I'm I'm quite confident to uh, you know to, to put the cards on the table that it's a great project to uh, to bring into the community. Thank you, uh, committee members. Any questions based on the response from the applicant? I see none. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, no further callings. We're going to close the discussion. And committee members, you've um, heard from the one neighbor who um, concerns involve, even though the dwelling's not as deep into the backyard as the existing one. The existing is one story versus the proposed two stories and that even though the side yard is an increase from the existing scenario he still believes that it's too close and will be too noisy and we also had this written submission which i think is speaking to the issue of the character of the dwelling compared to those on the street and uh You've heard the applicant's response that they've made significant revisions to the satisfaction of staff. And while they're seeking variances, they're not building to the maximum permitted uh, three-dimensional envelope. And I will leave that for you to consider and look for a motion. Mr. Flemington. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, just having uh, reviewed the uh, revised application and noting that the applicant has taken many steps to revise uh, what had been previously uh, proposed. So thank you for that. And thank you with working with the uh, town staff on some of the uh, dialogue that was had around that. Um, <clears throat> Also, uh, taking into account the uh, letters of, uh, uh, of opposition, the two of them, and as well as the neighbor's uh, oral presentation for the opposition this evening, um, I do think that the uh, applicant's agent has described that, you know, there is no variance here with regards to height. Um, I am comfortable with regards to what uh they have presented uh with regards to you know in the event that the um you know it, 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 they could build two stories at a at a you know more on the building that they're not they have reduced the uh you know the setback on the side yard and as well as uh you know the vegetation that is there like i'm comfortable with uh you know that not having a negative impact uh on the neighbor uh also you know recognizing that uh you know there is a change um you know with regards to the current application from the existing building that is there um so i do recognize that you know there's times when neighborhoods go through a change um you know there's some neighbors that are in support of and there are some that are not uh, but i think that our town staff report has articulated um you know the various different items on each variance in a manner that i agree with um so i am going to move a motion that the application be applied for or sorry approved as applied for uh finding that it's minor in nature and it does meet the four tests of the planning act i would like to move that with the following conditions um the first one is relevant to the cabana 
Okay. Um, so I know that uh, there's a cabana on the current drying, so that sort of changes this motion. So I'm going to say that the dwelling be built in general accordance uh, with the site plans uh, to the satisfaction of the director of planning with regards to the site plans that are submitted to the, the director of planning. Um, and the second one that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Mr. Flemington, I believe you meant to also add that it, it proceeds in general accordance with the elevation drawings dated September 3rd, as they're not changing. Yes, yeah, sorry, correct. So, correct. So can I just clarify that condition? So we're removing the word submitted from, from the condition that you guys have in front of you that the planning had suggested? Correct. Just because the submitted drawings have the a different cabana that's on there. I believe the intent is that uh, dwelling be built in general accordance with the elevation submitted September 3rd and site plan to the satisfaction of the director of planning. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, is there any discussion on that motion? I see none. All those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved, sir. So I just have a question. Um, I see on the law it says if the labor is not agreed, we have two days or to submit the uh, e appeal, correct? Yes, so you, you have the right to submit an appeal. I believe it's 20 days from, um, you will receive notice of the decision. And Madam Secretary Treasurer, just yes. to confirm, it will you the you will, will provide instructions if somebody wishes to appeal correct the the resident will receive a copy of the decision it'll have the the date of the last day to appeal um and that would be 20 days uh from today but all that information will be on the on the information that he will receive uh in the post and uh, appeal to the community or appeal to the justice like to the court you are appealing to the Ontario, uh, the Ontario, sorry, they changed their name, the law, the Ontario Tribunal. Uh, Ontario Land Tribunal. Tri OLT, the Ontario Land Tribunal, my apologies, but all that information will be on the documentation that you receive. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Our next application tonight will be CAV A160 at 1159 Lakeshore Road East. If anyone is watching these proceedings and would like to speak to this application, you could please call in at 905-815-6095. Again, 905-815-6095. I think we have Mr. Al Rawley to speak to this application. Yes, uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Ryder Rawi from Professional Floor Plans 5147 Preservation Circle, Mississauga, Ontario, L5M74. I'm the agent and the designer for the project. Okay, thank you, sir. Do you have the ability to turn your camera on? There we go. Yes, yeah. I yeah. always like to see okay. who we're speaking. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm lucky this time the sign is on. I'm sorry for the last time. We don't know how it uh, fell down, but it seems it's an act of nature. So uh, our application, I'll make it brief, uh, is to ask for two variances. One of them is the floor area ratio for a zone R1 where the 
lot areas more than 1300 square meter. And the other one is the lot coverage. Mainly the floor area ratio comes from building the second story uh, on top of the existing first story. We are keeping the front yard as is. The house is existing. We have we are doing an extension, so we're keeping the front yard, both side yards, and if you see the rear yard on the side, we are extending part and reducing another part. And uh, because we are building more on the second story, we are having more floor area ratio. For this one, we had seven rounds of discussion with the planning uh, staff, and we thank them for their patience, their help. Their guidance. We look. We we worked as a mediator between the client original vision and the staff recommendation until reaching a satisfactory design that is reducing the mass, pushing the second story further back, focusing only on the main entrance and simplifying the corners of the front elevation, reducing the total height from nine meter to almost about eight meter to make the mass feel. Uh, less uh, affecting uh, the uh, surroundings. And at the same time, we, we didn't change the uh, side yard, so we're not affecting our, any of the neighbors. Uh, for uh, the other uh, uh, variance, which is the lot coverage, which is not much, it's less than 1% uh, from 25%, we are asking for 25.93%. Mainly it comes because the culture changed after the COVID area and people start using their backyards more often than before. So we have uh, a considerable size of the rear porch uh, facing the pool house, and we have a, a, a pool in the rear. So the pool house will be as well. Of course, this is the existing house. If we go to the next page, we could see the proposed uh, one. So you see that we have a pool and a pool house and rear uh, shed, including the barbecue area, sitting area, you know, like parting area. So this added to the coverage, but still the staff were supportive of this variance from beginning because it's not affecting anybody. And we are not touching any uh, side yard or rear yard setbacks. We are in compliance with the other things. I would like just to move forward, if you can, just to show the committee the elevations and the height. This is existing elevation. It was a story and a half. Uh, so, uh, and this is also existing. The four uh, pages are existing. So the house is not bad in shape, but the client needed a little bit more uh, contemporary look for his vision. So you see, we are getting the 8.3 meter for the, even with the parapet and the nine meter, we are not reaching it even with the, some uh, roof features, which are not uh, an issue with the zoning by law, but the, Roof itself, the house itself will be something like eight meter. We reduce the garage uh, height per the staff comments. We simplify the front elevation, only focusing on the main entrance. And we sim simplify the corners. We have setback from the garage and things like that and ended up uh, getting the blessing from the staff. I am ready for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Committee members, any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anybody requested to speak to this application? Uh, yes, there is, but I think Ms. Murray had her hand up. Oh, sorry. Uh, a quick question through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, town staff. Um, I see that there are balconies. Um, are, are they permitted in this zone? Um, through you, Madam Chair, I need to confirm that. I don't believe that they're interpreted as balconies, but I, you give me a moment, I can confirm. Thank you. And I didn't, this is a follow up. I didn't, I, I am, did I miss the cabana on the drawings? Excuse me, can I explain? First, we don't have any balconies, it's only glass railing. Uh, in compliance with the staff vision in order to reduce the mass. We had samples from similar cases where there are no uh, balconies, there is no access to the front by any means, but in order to reduce the mass and show more transparent, we changed the parapet to reduce the garage level and we had this glass railing uh, in accordance to staff uh, recommendation. We follow the staff recommendation. 
Oh, okay. Well, I'm looking at the rear elevation. It appears to have a balcony with two with two doors exiting. With no, we don't. Can we have it on? We don't have any balconies in this house. We have we have a, a Joliet door, but we don't have any doors. If you go to a floor plan, we are not opening anything. It's not it's not in compliance with zoning by law. Are we able to get the presentation back up? I think the interpretation, if you can't step out into it, it's not considered a balcony. Yeah, this is the front yard. You see, these are only windows. There are no doors, and it's clear in the elevation. These are bedrooms. And uh, if you go to the, this is the front. If you go to the rear, yeah, this is the rear. Also, this is a Juliet. This is not a balcony. This is a Juliet uh, a balcony. It doesn't have any access to the to the rear. And if you go to the floor plans, I don't know if the floor plans is it there or maybe not. Mm -hmm. I think it's not in this presentation, maybe. But it's clear we are not doing any any balconies for sure. Sorry, Catherine, I don't think we got a chance to hear from you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I just wanted to confirm that the what's showing on the plans is not interpreted as a balcony by zoning staff. Are there any other questions? I see none, Madam Secretary Treasurer. We have someone to speak to the application? Yes, I'm just moving them into the meeting. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Mr. Rao Raoui. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the neighborhood. Uh, my name is Max Liu. I live at 1153 Lakeshore Road East, which is directly adjacent to 1159. Um, I just, I'm, I will say I'm not directly opposing this application, but I do have some concerns and questions. Um, one of which was confirmed, which the first of which was whether the space and expansion, any of it encroached into our side of the property or limited the interior yard, which it seems Mr. Arai says, has already declared that it does not. Um, others, including just the visual impact it has, because I will say the plan seemed a little ambiguous when I had reviewed them. For example, just it was, there wasn't a clear comparison between the height of the current location versus the new height of the building. So there was like a, it showed the meters of the new building. It did not show the, what it was for the previous one. And that would have an impact directly on any of our views facing that side, as well with the construction in the back. Um, we, with our previous neighbors, we had an open concept with our backyard and we, it's not fenced off, it's completely open. So I did want to discuss this with Mr. Alrai and some of these details. But I do believe the, my biggest concern was actually the lack of communication we did receive from our new neighbor. Um, we, the only reason we knew of this happening at all was of course from letters um, from the council. And even then we didn't even receive prior notice really for the first meeting directly from Mr. Alrai until it was too late for us to even join. Um, there were signs that we finally saw in the previous recent two or three weeks, but prior to that, we did not receive any communication. And even after that, Mr. Alrai never reached out to us to consult with us about the changes and re renovations he does plan to make. And <laughs> which is kind of, a, as one of the only, one of two neighbors beside him, it's a bit of a far cry from the 31 from one of the previous applicants. So um, you know, we do hope that a lot of these concerns, I feel we could have communicated directly with him, but as it stands, this was my only opportunity to actually reach out to him. 
Okay, thank you. And we'll let um, Mr. O'Reilly respond. Uh, I, I will add to some of the concerns you raised that yes, he is not requesting that the house be built any closer to your property or that there be any increase beyond what uh, is permitted in height on the zoning bylaw. In fact, he's indicated he's under the height. Mm -hmm. and, um, with respect to fencing, that's really not a matter for this committee, but is something between neighbors. And it's unfortunate you feel there's a lack of communication. We always encourage uh, the applicants to speak to their neighbors and show up, as you indicated, with 31 letters of support as opposed to objections. Um, but um, I, I, and I will let Ms. Rowry respond, but um, it sounds like and he'd be well served to, again, if the committee were to approve this tonight, to, you know, reach out to you as well and discuss any of the concerns you have, as I'm sure he was watching the previous application, if neighbors uh, are not satisfied, they do have a right to an appeal. So, uh, but at this point, I'll ask uh, him to respond directly to your comments. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can we have the proposed site plan uh, on the presentation? Yeah, the, yeah. You see, uh, uh, we are uh, first. Uh, thank you for your comments, uh, and I, uh, uh, I'm sorry for that. But I think the client tried to reach out a couple of times. He rang the door. Nobody was there, especially at the night when we had the sign fell down. And he wants also to say hi and to ask you for uh, uh, any, if you see anything or what, what happened to the sign. But I mean, he knocked at the door, nobody opened. So uh, he couldn't be there. And he's living in Kitchener so far. So the house is vacant. So it would be difficult sometimes to coordinate. But I will make sure that we will pay you a visit and uh, discuss uh, further any of your concerns. You see that our house is far uh, beyond the neighboring house. Uh, and uh, this makes actually uh, approximately no effect on, on the house, on the front yard, on the uh, vision of the house. We are keeping the side yard setback as is exactly. And even we are cutting from the rear, from this side. We go to the existing, uh, the first slide, first slide you see there is a small part of the house on this side if we can go to the previous slide yes you see this part is going to be removed and flattened with the other part of that so actually we are reducing the impact on this side of the neighbor and uh, the height as we said it's almost the same height of the existing house because we had, we took it down from what is allowed uh, so we, we don't feel that there is any uh, actual impact on, 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 the, on the neighbor, both neighbors. Of course, we've been in, in touch with the school on the other side of the property uh, because they work on uh, regular hours. We were able to reach out to them and we discussed with them because they, we are doing the uh, pool house and the pool mainly on their side. And you know, there are privacy and there will be children it's a uh, elementary school. So we wanted to discuss these things that we did and we are getting support from themselves and from the landlord. Uh, but, and we are uh, uh, sorry for any misunderstanding with the neighbor. We'll make sure that we will visit the neighbor in the coming days and discuss with him uh, all the issues. We show him all the drawings, we show him the 3D, the renders. And if he has any comments, we will, for sure will consider it and make sure that we will be good neighbors throughout the whole process until finishing the house and living there. My client uh, would like to have this as a lifetime house and he's retiring soon. So for him, this is an important thing to have a good neighbor and support the neighbor and everybody will be happy uh, together. We don't want to start with uh, somebody who is uh, unhappy with us. Thank it's okay, you. that's that's honestly all we ask is we appreciate if you guys can actually reach out and then again, I'm sure all of this we can work out as neighbors. Um, and I appreciate your understanding. Okay, well, thank you both for those comments.
Madam Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone else wishing to speak to this application? Uh, not at this time. Okay, thank you. And I'll close discussion and look for a motion. Ms. Murray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, having conducted my site visit, reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of. Uh, having also taken into account the comments presented by the applicant, and I'd like to thank Mr. Liu for taking the time to participate this evening. I, I think it's really important that that people do participate and. Um, uh, it, it was good to hear your comments, so thank you. Uh, uh, noting that there are no written uh, uh, objections that have that have come into this project, um, and hearing that that we we think that Mr. Al Al Rawi and uh, his client will work with the neighbors um, is, is comforting. So I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act. I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions, where, which are that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings submitted for the proposed dwelling dated August 31st, 2021, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved, sir. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, my neighbor. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you guys soon. For sure. <laughs> Our final application for the evening, CAV A164 at 1194 Sterling Drive. I see Ms. Baker, uh, welcome. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, it's not my patience you need to thank me with. It's your, it's, uh, your service you, you put in Long Tuesday. So thank you for that. Um, for the record, uh, my name is Denise Baker, and my address is 10, Unit 10 of 1524 Cornwall Road in Oakville, L6JOB2. Thank you. And just before I let you proceed, I'll just remind anybody watching if they wish to speak to this application, if you can call in at 905-815-6095. 905-815-6095. Ms. Baker, please proceed. Uh, thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna speak to the uh, staff report. This, um, this matter is a, a simple variance request that has a complicated history. There are four variances before you, three of which, if you look at the photograph on page four of the staff report, three of which deal with the enclosure of the garage. The garage has always been located in, uh, or has already always been at that location, but was um, historically a carport uh, and was then subsequently uh, enclosed by uh, adding the drywall to effectively the, the carport um, uh, uh, legs, if you will, for lack of a better term. Um, and it's the enclosure of the of the carport into a garage uh, that has prompted the first three variances. And then the fourth variance deals with a deck off of the back, which you can see on page six of the staff report, uh, replaces a former deck uh, that was uh, located in generally in the same location. Um, the long and complicated history of this is what we, when we look at the page four of the picture on page four of the staff report, we would look at that and traditionally see off to the, uh, when you're looking at the house off to the right would be the side yard. Uh, instead, that is actually the rear yard because this is a flankage lot. And as a result of that being a rear yard, 
uh, you can see that we need the most significant uh, variance being um, variance number three, which is to permit the minimum rear yard of 1.74 for the attached private garage when you would otherwise need 10.5 meters. And that's because that rear, that, uh, that side yard, which is technically the rear yard, um, it does, however, function as the side yard. And as you can see from the survey on page one of the drawing package, the, what is truly the side yard actually functions as the rear yard. That's where the swimming pool is. That's where they need the deck from the second floor, what is second floor family room, um, where you can see it's it's currently barricaded off for, for safety reasons. So it's simply a function of this being a flankage yard. Now, what adds to the complication in all of this is you've seen these first three variances before and the committee turned them down on the basis that in this technical rear yard is also an easement in favor of Oakville Hydro. And at one, uh, previously that easement was much wider. However, uh, or sorry, and as a result, the committee of adjustment turned down the previous variances because they would have encroached into that easement. On August 9th of 2021, the town of Oakville passed a resolution reducing the size of that easement to 1.74 meters which as a result of the reduction of the side of the easement, the private garage, neither the private garage uh, nor the uncovered platform or the deck uh, would encroach into the easement that's in favor of, um, of Oakville Hydro. Now, notwithstanding that, I can tell you, and for those of you who are familiar in this business, you will see that there are four conditions uh, that are attached to the staff report, the last of which uh, is that this decision only come into effect once the new 1.74 meter replacement Hydrotown easement is executed and registered and the current 10 foot Hydrotown easement is released and discharged. I can advise that we are currently working with council for Oakville Hydro to have that happen. However, there have been significant delays in getting the survey completed. Um, but I can tell you it's now with the registry office and we're just simply waiting for the R plan to be deposited so that we have um, a legal description for the easement to then be uh, registered on title. So that's the purpose of number four, and it is, uh, it's underway, but we've had great uh, delays um, with respect to, uh, frankly, the, the surveying of the property. Um, I'm happy to speak to the other conditions as well, but I will advise um, overall that uh, we are supportive uh, and agree with the contents of the staff report, including the four conditions that they're seeking uh, to have attached to this condition. The first two are your um, general normal conditions. And the third one is that you'll see a, a swimming pool has been uh, uh, put in the, in the rear yard. And you can see that on the photograph on page six of the staff report. Um, the pool equipment for that uh, was placed on a, a removable a platform uh, on the side yard. That is, um, that's still being discussed with Oakville Hydro. Um, they, they're not hugely keen on the size of the platform. And so those discussions are still underway. Um, but what staff wanted to make sure and be very clear, and I can acknowledge that we understand that notwithstanding that the pool equipment is shown on, um, on the drawings, on the submitted site plan, um, that the variances, there are no variances being sought for any of the pool equipment. Actually, no variances would be needed for the pool equipment, um, but it's, uh, we acknowledge that this committee doesn't have the ability to approve the location of that pool equipment simply because it's shown on that, uh, on that uh, site plan drawing that's attached with the, pa with the package. Um, and that's still being discussed with, uh, the ultimate location of the pool equipment is still being discussed with the town and that will be I dealt with through the pool permit that we have to get uh, uh, through the town. Um, so I think staff just simply wanted to ensure that we were aware that approving or approving this these variances didn't approve. We still had the pool permit process to uh, continue to go through. Um, so uh, again, we're just in com complete agreement with the contents of the staff report. Um, I will note, which I think is the theme of the day, um, we do have two letters of support, uh, one from the neighbor that is directly across the street who looks uh, directly into what is now the garage. They would have historically looked into the carport and certainly their preference is to have the garage enclosed 
uh, as is uh, as is shown in the photograph. And the second, and, and as a result, they support the variances. And then the second uh, letter of support is uh, from the neighbors directly to the west. They're the ones who um, are on the other side of the fence on this rear yard, uh, and they too are uh, fully in support of, uh, of, of the variances requested. So those would be, uh, frankly, the two most affected neighbors uh, by the variances requested, and they've both indicated their support with respect to this application. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, subject to any questions that you may have, those are my submissions. Thank you, Ms. Baker. And if it's any consolation, I'm also having great difficulty getting surveys completed these days. So you're not <laughs> alone. Uh, committee members, any questions for Ms. Baker? I'm seeing none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in to speak to this application? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, thank you. I'll therefore close discussion and look for a motion. Mr. Hardcastle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Having um, undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report and the uh, substantial uh, presentation by Ms. Baker, um, as well as um, recalling this from the, from the previous time this was before the committee, I am satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests of the act. I think that, um, you know, as articulated, um, there are a, a number of existing variances related to existing conditions that are, um, um, you know, uh, have, have minimal impact and, and, uh, and could largely be considered technical in nature. Um, and I, I believe that the resolution re related to the, um, uh, to the easement and the conditions that are put forth uh, within the staff report address any other underlying concerns. And, uh, with uh, with the support letters provided by the two neighbors, um, I, I I do believe that the variance is conformed to the four tests and uh, will have uh, will be satisfactory. So um, as such, I will put forward this motion subject to four conditions. Those contained within the staff report uh, without revision, and th those being that the construction be in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated September fourteenth, twenty twenty one, subject to condition three that the approval expires within two years of the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued, that the proposed, sorry, that the pool equipment and pad location shown on the submitted site plan and elevation drawings, drawing two, uh, and the currently constructed pool equipment and pad location not to be taken uh, to be approved by this decision, but rather be subject to the limitations of the easement and any required development engineering pool permit. Um, zoning bylaw and Ontario building code, and that this decision only come into effect once the new 1.74 meter replacement hydro town easement is executed and registered, and the current 10 foot wide hydro town easement is released and discharged. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. I'm sure Ms. Murray and Mr. Flemington are thankful that you chose to read those conditions and not them. Yeah. And is there a discussion on, I see a high five or thumbs up there from Ms. Murray. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve? That is unanimous. Your application has been approved. I uh, thank you and good evening to you all. Okay. Good evening. Okay. That's the last application for Tonight, can I get someone to move the minutes of November 9th? Mr. Flemington, thank you. And Mr. Hardcastle, a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. We are adjourned. I've got 9.13.